Good day, sir. I am Mary Rose Elanusga, and I'm here to discuss about the free trade and utility by David Ricardo. So, here is my topic outline about the free trade and utility. First, we will know about who is David Ricardo. Number two is that we will be tackling about comparative advantage and give example on it. And the third one will be the criticisms of Ricardo. So now, let's get to know about who is David Ricardo and his notable theory. Um, David Ricardo was born in England in 1772. He is one of the 17 children and he began working with his father at the age of 14 as a stockbroker. He was disowned by his father at the age of 21 because of marrying outside of their religion. He became successful and wealthy with his business that he started in dealing with government securities. At the age of 41, he retired and served as a member of parliament. So, David Ricardo is a British classical economist known for his theory on wages and profit, the labor theory of value, the theory of comparative advantage that I will be tackling today, and the theory of rents. His most well-known work is The Principles of Political Economy and Taxation in 1817. Um, let's now proceed to the theory of comparative advantage. But before that, let's have a quick review about Absolute Advantage by Adam Smith that has been deeply, deeply explained by Miss Kimberly Balonzo. Um, absolute Advantage is a situation where the production cost, cost in terms of the resources consumed in producing the good of making a commodity are lower for one country than for another. But this is where the Ricardian theory of comparative cost existed. Ricardo, Ricardo argued that it is not compulsory for a country to have an absolute advantage for trade to take place. Trade can exist even if there is a comparative advantage. Let's, not, let's now talk about what is comparative advantage. It is a situation where the opportunity cost or the cost in terms of other goods given up of making a commodity are lower for one country than for another. Free trade. Um, free trade is a is an advocacy by Ricardo who showed everyone prospers if nation if nations specialize in making and exporting goods whose opportunity cost to them are lower than the opportunity cost that other nations incur to make same goods. Same as Adam Smith, he, ad, uh, he also advocate, advocated about free trade where who showed everyone prospers if nations specialize in making and exporting goods whose production cost for them are lower than for other nations. So, yung pinagkaiba lang ay, ay Adam Smith, parang production cost yung pinag-uusapan at yung kay David Ricardo naman ay more on sa opportunity cost ang pinag-uusapan. This both arguments of Adam Smith and David Ricardo provide supports for globalization. So now, let's have discuss, let's discuss the let's discuss the example given by David Ricardo. So, England, we can see here that in England, it takes 120 labor hours to produce a one unit of wine and it also takes it also take 100 labor hours to produce a one unit of cloth. However, in Portugal, it only takes 80 labor hours to produce one unit of wine and 90 labor hours to produce one unit of cloth. We can see that Portugal has an absolute advantage in producing both wine and cloth. Hence, Adam Smith argued that trade should not be possible. Moreover, 
Adam Ricardo's perspective is this, as that we can see that Portugal has a more of an advantage in producing wine than producing cloth, hence Portugal should produce wine and leave cloth for England. Why? If England produces wine and cloth, then the internal exchange rate would be 1.2 units of cloth for 1 unit of wine. And in, and in Portugal, the internal rate of trade would be 0.89 unit of cloth for 1 unit of wine. This is because in Portugal, the cloth makers are working harder so they will pay less of cloth for 1 unit of wine. So think of it, if Portugal trades 1 unit of cloth with 1 unit of wine with England, then it would be beneficial for both. Looking at the, pers looking at the Portugal's perspective, Portugal was paying 1 unit of wine and getting 0.89 unit of cloth. But now, it is getting one full unit of cloth from England's perspective that had to give 1.2 units of cloth for one unit of na from one unit of wine. But now, it just have to give one unit of cloth both, so both of the countries win from this trade. So, that is the example given by David Ricardo that, that is being used as an inspiration by many companies and other economists. This ingenious argument of Ricardo has been hailed as the single most important and most meaningful economic, economic discovery ever made. Some have said it is the most surprising and counterintuitive concept in economics. Comparative advantage is, without a doubt, the most important concept in international trade theory that today is at the heart of the most significant economic arguments people propose when they argue in favor of globalization. In fact, it is the key argument for globalization and free trade. All the arguments politicians and economists make in favor of globalization and free trade come down to Ricardo's Point. Globalization is good because specialization and free trade boost total economic output and everyone can share in this increased output. So let us now proceed to the last objective of this discussion, which is the criticisms of Ricardo. There are other assumptions, however, they are not so easy to get around. First, Ricardo assumes that the resources used to produce goods such as the labor, equipment, factories, etc. do not move from one country to another. Yet today, multinational companies can and easily do move their productive capital from one country to another. Second, Ricardo assumes that each country's production costs are constant and do not decline as countries expand their production. An example, there are no economy there are no economies of scale or as they are, or as they acquire new technology. But we know that the cost of producing goods regularly decline as companies expand production and develop ever better production technologies. Thirdly, Ricardo assumes that workers can easily and without cost move from one industry to another. From making wine, for example, to making cloth. Yet, when a company in a country closes down because it cannot compete with imports from another country that has a comparative advantage in these goods, the company's workers are laid off, suffers heavy cost, need retraining, and often cannot find comparable jobs. Finally, and perhaps the most important, Ricardo ignores international rule setters. International trade inevitably leads to disagreements and conflicts and so countries must agree to abide by some set of rules. Today, the main organization that sets the rules that govern globalization and trade in the all over the world is that the World Trade Organization. Although both the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund also impose rules on countries that borrow money from them. Critics claim that 
these organizations impose requirements that harm poor developing countries while benefiting the wealthy developed nations and their businesses. So that's all for the Free Trade and Utility by David Ricardo. I am once again Mary Rose Elanusga and thank you so much po for listening. Thank you.